Hi everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. Right here, I have Miss Spidey, who is still in her little underground lair. I have been hoping for the last few weeks that she will come out. This is actually a little bit odd for her over the summer because she's usually pretty active, but um, she really likes being in there. And I tried to get like a somewhat decent angle to maybe where you can see into her little dome, but I don't think you can. Um, anyway, this is kind of a, I guess a great example of the reality of owning a tarantula is that sometimes you're going to have a pet hole or a pet rock or a spider who is just like in hiding for weeks. But anyway, today for Tarantula Tuesday, I wanted to share a really, really cool amount of research that I came across the internet. It's a bit scientific, so I'm probably gonna be reading from my notes quite a bit during this video just because it's a lot to remember and I don't have it on the top of my head, but this is about, and I've done quite a few videos about this in the past, but this is yet another example about how spiders are helping researchers make these really incredible technological advances in our world. And this is specifically about spider silk. I will certainly link previous videos that I've done about how spider silk is helping us humans. And I'll also link this particular study or research article so you can actually read it and check it out. But um, this is really, really cool. Re researchers are actually looking to spider silk to help them produce soft, recyclable fibers for smart textiles. textiles. And smart textiles, I guess, could be considered anything that is responsive. Smart textiles are often used for wearable technology applications, and this could be anywhere from therapeutics to sensing to communication. And that's because these intelligent textiles need to be strong, stretchable, and electrically conductive. And interestingly enough, spider silk actually does have properties such as these, which is really, really cool. And the reason that they're exploring spider silk for these properties at all is just because it's actually really hard and complex to make fibers that are strong, stretchable, and electrically conductive. So um, the inspiration was actually how spiders do spin silk to make webs. And this particular work was done by a team of researchers led by assistant professor Sui Ching Tan from the Department of Materials, Science and Engineering under the National University of Singapore's College of Design and Engineering. And this team had also worked with international collaborators. And what they did was in studying spider silk, they actually found a method of producing these soft spiders, uh, soft fibers that have those three properties, the you know strong, stretchable, conductive. This is also really attractive because this actual soft fibers could be reused. Um, so it's recyclable. And I think that's a really important thing to consider. Um, another reason why this particular thing that is spider inspired is attractive is because it can be carried out at room temperature and pressure, which uses less energy. And so it's definitely a less environmentally unfriendly option. This is what Professor Taunt said. He said, technologies for fabricating soft fibers should be simple, efficient, and sustainable to meet the high demand for smart textile electronics. Soft fibers created using our spider-inspired method of spinning has been demonstrated to be versatile for various smart technology applications. For example, these functional fibers can be incorporated into a strain sensing glove for gaming purposes and a smart face mask to monitor breathing status for conditions such as obstructive sleep apnea. These are just some of the many possibilities. I think that's really, really exciting um, to have like a wear of, uh, like a glove that can actually respond to you through it te its technology. I really love the idea that this could be used for things like sleep apnea. Um, sleep apnea is incredibly common and I see this quite a bit in my clients uh, just because if you have sleep apnea, you are not sleeping very well, you're always tired. And psychologically and physically, what tiredness can do to you is really wreck your, well, of course, your physical health, but also your mental health. Um, there is a lot of research that supports anxiety and depression worsening because of poor sleep. And so I find that, you know, that is quite encouraging because a lot of people don't like um, 
a lot of the sleep apnea treatments like the CPAP machines and things like that. Currently, most conventional artificial spinning methods to fabricate synthetic fibers do require high pressure, high energy input, large volumes of chemicals, and specialized equipment. And even with all of that, these fibers actually have limited functions. So in contrast, the spider silk spinning process is very efficient and it forms, for, it forms strong, versatile fibers under room temperature and pressure. And so what this team did was they emulated the natural spinning process of spiders to create one-dimensional functional soft fibers. They mimic two steps in spider silk formation to actually create this or to, to accomplish this. So one of those is spider silk formation involves the change of a highly concentrated protein solution known as silk dope, interesting name, into a strand of fiber. So the researchers identified that the protein conversation and interactions in the silk dope increase from dope synthesis to spinning. And then the second step identified that the arrangement of proteins within the dope changes when triggered by external factors to help separate the liquid portion from the silk dope, leaving the solid part, which is the spider silk fibers. And so this second step is known as liquid solid phase separation. And that was a lot more about spider silk than I ever knew, so I appreciated this article. And so this team recreated those two steps and developed the new spinning process known as the phase separation enabled ambient or PSEA spinning approach. So what they did was the soft fibers were spun from a from a gel solution, which is called panchen. It's created out of a few different um, things such as polyacrylonitrile and silver ions, which they called panchen. And they dissolve this in a Kalman solvent called DMF. And once the panchen gel is pulled and exposed to air, water molecules in the air act as a trigger to cause the liquid portion of the gel to separate in the form of droplets from the solid portion of the gel. And this particular phase is called the non-solvent vapor-induced phase separation effect. And so when separated from the solid fiber, the droplets of liquid portion are removed by holding the fiber vertically or at an angle for gravity to do its work. Professor Tan said, fabrication of one-dimensional soft fibers with seamless integration of all round functionalities is much more difficult to achieve and requires complicated fabrication or multiple post-treatment processes. This innovative method fulfills an unmet need to create a simple yet efficient spinning approach to produce functional one-dimensional soft fibers that simultaneously possess unified mechanical and electrical functionalities. And so what this spider influence spinning process does is it creates this gel solution that allows soft fibers to be made that have those strong stretchable and electronically conductive properties. And this was tested through a lot of stress tests and demonstrated that this new fiber possessed really great strength and elasticity. And also at a molecular level, um, electrical conductivity was actually confirmed because of the silver ions present in the Pantheon gel. And so they found a way to accomplish all three things. And so they're thinking that this gel is going to be very, very useful and could actually be used for quite a few things. So potential applications for this that they're talking about are perhaps communication and temperature sensing. One of those things was when these pension fibers were sewn to create an interactive glove that exemplified a smart gaming glove. Very cool. And when connected to a computer interface, the glove could successfully detect human hand gestures and enable a user to play simple games. Another really cool potential application is that these fibers could detect changes in electrical signals that could be used as a form of communication like Morse code. Um, they can also sense temperature changes, which could be capitalized to protect robots from environments with extreme temperatures. They have also sewn these fibers into a smart face mask for monitoring the breathing activities of the mask wearer. 
besides like the wide ways that we might be able to use these pinch and soft fibers is that this is an incredibly sustainable solution. Um, these fibers, not only do they take less resources than the ways that we're currently producing fibers, but they can be recycled by dissolving them in the DMF and then allowing it, them to be converted back into the gel solution for spinning new fibers. So completely reusable, it seems like. And this would significantly lower amounts of energy and lower volume of chemicals, which are all very, very important things in our world to do. So right now, this research team is working on improving the sustainability of these pinch and soft fibers through the production cycle, um, from raw materials to recycling the final product. And I'm quite excited to see what comes of that and to see um, this actually be applied one day. I think my hope, you know, there's a lot of really wonderful things that get put out into our world, but people don't necessarily know where the inspiration comes from. And so I think my goal with putting this video out is to one, educate you about how cool spiders and their spider silk is, but, you know, to maybe show that um, spiders and, and, you know, all sorts of little creatures that, you know, most people in our world don't really think of as, you know, anything useful or important to our world. But um, these creatures are actually really, really helping us, you know, and, and studying them helps us create a better world, a more sustainable world. Um, it helps enrich our human race, being able to actually um, provide people with wearable technology that could help them or maybe even save lives. And so um, I think that it's really important to share this information, um, you know, because a lot of people will one day use this technology and not understand or know anything about where it comes from or, you know, what went into making these things. Um, unfortunately, you know, when we look at, you know, the back of a box of a product, it never says anything like this was inspired by spiders and the way that they produce silk. And so I think it's important for us to share these things so that maybe this knowledge could reach a few people. Um, but anyway, guys, let me know what you think about that. I thought it was really, really cool. And um, I'm hoping to kind of stay on top of that research so that I can, uh, you know, as they continue to develop this that I can tell you guys about like the next phase or actual implementation. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. And I'll see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Take care. Bye.